So, here we are, looking out over the city and county of Bristol at the beginning of yet another year. What will happen? Or not? Who knows? But here are some of the things making the local headlines in Bristol and its environs in February 2023. After a few delays, Bristol's Clean Air Zone finally came into force at the end of November last year, with a charge of £9 a day for high emission cars and £100 for heavy goods vehicles and buses. As the website says, the zone is to encourage drivers and businesses to either update their vehicles to newer, less polluting ones, change their route, change their method of transport, or not make the trip at all. Well, the jury's certainly out on that one. And if you should decide to travel by bus instead, that can be problematic. With, speaking from personal experience, ongoing delays and cancellations to services, a shortage of drivers, and local councils withdrawing their financial subsidies to 42 non-profitable routes from April. Ah oh well. Work's due to begin this summer on a major upgrade of Bristol's walking and cycling routes, including both the temporary cycle lanes in Park Row and the closure of Cottom Hill to traffic being made permanent, and ending up looking like this sunny artist's impression. You could, of course, make your journey on a green, or rather pink, electric scooter. Love them or loathe them, the e-scooter rental trial in Bristol and South Gloucestershire is the most popular of the 31 trials across the country, with more than 7.3 million rides since the scheme began in October 2020. Voy has operated the e-scooter since then, but the scheme could be taken over by a new non-pink company, as operators have been asked to bid for a long-term contract across our region. So, where do you go in your car, or bus, or on your e-scooter, or bicycle, or on foot or whatever? How about getting out into the fresh air of the Ashton Court Estate? with its glorious Grade 1 listed mansion. Still waiting to hear if funds can be found from somewhere to stop it slowly crumbling away. Or you could go into Bristol and visit what's now called its shopping quarter. Or, as older Bristolians still call it, Broadmead. A combination of high shop rents, having to pay for parking, and fewer customers since Covid have taken their toll. Destination stores, like the still empty Debenhams, closed in 2021, and Marks and Spencers last year in 2022. And the galleries complex, built to replace the layout puzzle that was Fairfax House, has quite a few empty units. It's not all doom and gloom though, for the younger clientele, there's always Primark, or the undercover shopping area of Cabot Circus. Greater minds than mine are, as I speak, tasked with coming up with bright ideas to bring people back in and liven up the area. The derelict eyesore of the former Norwich Union building, which masks the ruin of St Mary Laporte Church, grows even more colourful awaiting work for the redevelopment of the west end of Castle Park to begin, despite concerns about the plans, including its various eight- and nine-storey blocks being criticised by Historic England as large, monolithic entities which would fail to respond to the fine grain of the old city, whatever that means. What was the Colston Hall closed its doors in June 2018 for a £50 million redevelopment? After several setbacks, it will open again 
as the renamed Bristol Beacon on the 30th of November. The total cost coming in at £132 million. This land, near Templemead's railway station, was originally earmarked as the site of Bristol's long-awaited arena. That plan was ruled out in 2018. The following year, a Malaysian company, YTL, announced it would create a 17,000 capacity arena from the vast space of the former Brabazon hangar. At the edge of the old Filton Airfield site, it's developing. And it would open in 2024. That capacity has now been increased to 19,000, but its completion date delayed to 2026. On the planning front, the so-called Battle of Brislington Meadows between Bristol City Council and the developer Homes England carries on. Councillors have already rejected plans for up to 260 homes on this green space in South Bristol, but that final verdict has been called into doubt by an appeal from the developer. Rupert Street, in the centre of the city, is already a focus for student accommodation. Now a plan has been proposed to demolish the NCP car park there and erect a 21-storey tower featuring up to 450 car parking spaces, 3,225 square feet of commercial space, 250 co-living units, whatever they are, and 320 student rooms. Temple Meads is going to have, among other things, three new entrances, a multi-storey car park, new commercial and retail space, and less glamorous things like refurbishing the roof and a rewire. Whilst the City Council is asking for views on the proposed huge Temple Quarter development project, for the regeneration of the area surrounding the station, including St Philip's Marsh and the Dings. It will probably mean the demolition of this rather stark grey shoebox building, City Point, one of the first things visitors see as they arrive by train. In the meantime, just along from City Point, the owner of the former Grosvenor Hotel which closed 30 years ago, has asked the council for permission to demolish it as it's structurally unsound following a fire in October 2022. And finally, as they say in all the best news programmes, despite plans twice being recommended for approval for 62 new homes, a mixture of apartments and muse houses, being built on a former Bristol Zoo car park site on College Road Clifton, something called a pre-action protocol letter has been sent to Bristol City Council, claiming that the granting of this approval was unlawful on at least four grounds. In this case, the phrase is to be continued. After 186 years, Bristol Zoo closed its doors here last September and is relocating to the Wild Place project in South Gloucestershire. But what will happen to this former zoo site here in Clifton? A good question, and one that will, no doubt, generate lots of ideas and, you can be sure, lots of objections.